goodbye, pretty babe, baby, bye-bye. I never see any more. May God bless you where you go. Cause bye bye, pretty baby. was my version of Bye Bye Blues by Little Hat Jones and uh, <clears throat> I came to know this uh, piece in the early 70s and maybe you've seen the LP cover in the background uh, during the performance that's uh, the first LP on Adelphi Records by Roy Bookbinder and it had this song on, uh, on it and that's how, how I came to know it I played a little bit different than Little Hat Jones did. Uh, I think I simplified it a little bit and I use a, a chord, I think the D7 and G, C7 that he doesn't use anyway. If you're interested in the tablature, please do open the video description. This song is part of my gigantic lesson pack called Free Lessons Pack. And the lessons, the video lessons are free, of course. And if you want to tap, then uh, you're gonna have to fork it over <laughs> anyway uh, it's a simple song i think you can learn it from the video only so we're in standard tuner i'm using a capo on the first fret makes things a little bit easier and um, also it suits my voice a little bit more so let's go over the arrangement slowly <laughs> Almost a one chord song, uh, the G chord, and 
a little bit of the C chord, so that makes it very easy to play. And <clears throat> the melody follows the vocal line, so that makes it also easy to sing. So we're starting with the G chord, and it's an alternating bass throughout. So, second, sorry, third string, second fret and third fret. Open, open second string. Add the pinky to the second string third fret. And of course my capo is the zero fret. So one more time. And then we go to a C chord, C7, back to G. So that first line of the tap, one more time. And then we have the turnaround, which I use the whole song. The same fingerings, but I use different right hands. Uh, that's how it is tapped out. So the bass goes down and the treble goes up. Third finger, then as if you're playing a C chord but without the fifth string and then you move the second finger to the second fret of the second string and the index to the first fret of the fourth string. One more time. G7 C I'll do the vocals later. You see, I'm releasing my index to grab that, to be able to tilt my hand so the pinky can get that fourth fret, second ring. Back to normal. So in bar seven, we have that C chord with the pinky on the first ring, third fret. And now I'm going with my index to the first fret of the first ring. And now, in the middle of the beat, the last beat of measure 7, I'm changing chords to a G with the pinky on the 2nd string, 3rd fret. And the index plays the 1st fret of the 2nd string. There. Measure 7 and 8 one more time. to a G chord. Pinky does all the work switching between the first and the second string. <clears throat> Measure 9 one more time. And in measure 11 vibrato there. Also you'll notice then during the performance I accent the bass. There's nothing happening there in measure 11 uh, so you have <coughs> opportunity of doing something with the bass strings. And then again da, da, da. pretty much what we played in the beginning. I'll sing it, I'll play it one more time and sing it. Uh, I put, for the first verse anyway, the lyrics under the tablature so you know uh, more or less where to start singing. Well, it's bye, bye. Now, the 
the variations in the that turnaround. Sometimes I start with instead of let's look at measure 16. That's what in the tap, but I also played for example instead of the open second string, I hit the first string with uh, the G note. You can do all kinds of variations. Just go to the left hand, through the left hand, but adapt the right hand. For example, I did. I started with picking the inner core, inner strings. Two, three, and four. Or in the rhythm, you can do things like that. But I advise you to learn the arrangement first as it is tapped out. And then when you have it in your fingers, you will hopefully uh, be able to do little variations with the right hand patterns. Now, <clears throat> the solos. They are uh, mine largely, uh, <clears throat> based of course on the <clears throat> melody line, but they are different to what uh, Little Head Jones played. So here's the first solo slowly. <laughs> up again, measure 18. Pinky there, open. And then that's a neat trick I learned from Doug Baker. When you're playing in the key of G, you're a bit stuck to that chord and to the alternating bass, sixth string fretted and the fourth string open. But if you do a temp rap of the sixth string on the third fret, have your fingers rather free to move around. And then you come in the, let's say, the boxes of your E chord moved up and everything you play on the E chord, you could play then with your fingers freely. And in this case, measure 20, third string, uh, sorry, first string, third fret, and the second string, fifth fret. And I'm bending, going down for the second beat, and then to make things easier, uh, I uh, switched over with the index because the song is not a fast song. You have plenty of time to do that. So one more time. There's a, one of those rhythmic variations for the turnaround. By the way, if you want to keep it simple, you don't do the up, the ascending run with your uh, on the second string. You can simply like that. I think Little Hat Jones does it that way. So uh, let's play one more time that uh, those measures 20 and 21. Double bass. So the second beat is like that, and I'm not playing any bass in the third beat, and I resume the, ta the alternating bass when I play the fourth beat of measure 22. 
And of course, um, and I did that during the performance, when I play in the solos, I use snippets here and there to put in the <clears throat> accompaniment behind the vocals for the other verses. I'm pretty sure I did like that in one of the verses, so <clears throat> that's also an option to do. So one more time, then we go to our C chord. Slide to the with the pinky to the fifth fret, open fifth string, and go back to your C chord and the G. All right, one more time. You can use at the end of the, the solo what we played in bar 19 and for the C7 chord you can or all right that's it for the first solo in the second solo Play that slowly. variation for that turnaround is to mute after you pick with your picking finger so you you pick it and then you place them back on the strings again and go on and on using two fingers again so the second solo in bar 27 A lot of movement there, and here it becomes critical. I simply move my uh, pinky to the fourth fret, and then I grab the C chord. One more time. Using two fingers, one for uh, strings two and three. Walk up, and you can do like that too, do that in context. I think I didn't do it in uh, the performance, maybe the first one. All different choices you can make. Um, start with bar 30 one more time. Little, well, different here in bar 33. I'm almost, well, I'm. It's a, a <clears throat> let's say, a partial or some strange uh, G7 chord, first fret, third fret, and in middle of uh, the beat, I'm going back to my C chord. So bar 33, and back to our G chord. Mm, 
bar 19 and that variation with the C7. So that's it about it, I guess, for um, <clears throat> Bye Bye Baby Blues. Uh, I'm not sure how did I end it. I wanted to end with, with three times. But somehow I forgot or did do something else. I think I think. I'm simply walking through that G chord with everything that is possible. possibilities there. Okay, have fun with this song. Mm -hmm.